Hey guys, it's Michael from Cocker Chemistry, and today's video we'll be talking about how to read, interpret, and draw Maxwell distribution curves. Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curves are also called kinetic energy distribution curves. So these curves just shows how the kinetic energy or the molecular speed is distributed for a particular compound and can be broken into two broad categories, that involving a change in temperature and then that involving a change in the identity of the substance. So let's jump into some examples. Here we have to draw the Maxwell uh, Boltzmann slash kinetic energy distribution curve for N2 at 15 degrees Celsius, 45 degrees Celsius, and 70 degrees Celsius. So we have the same compound as N2, but it's just at, at different temperatures. I'm going to start with the middle temperature at 45 degrees Celsius and just draw a generic curve uh, looking like, let's say, looking like, like that. So the way to read this is it, at the y-axis, it's usually the number of molecules, and then on the x-axis, it could be velocity, it could be speed, it could be kinetic energy. But you can see that some molecules are moving at a really high speed, some are moving at a really slow speed, and then the majority are moving kind of near, near the middle at the very peak of the curve. So that could be the distribution curve at 45 degrees Celsius. I just arbitrarily drew something. Now this, what's important is how the, the other curves look in relation to the yellow curve that I drew. So let's now draw the curve for 15 degrees Celsius. So we know that temperature is directly related to kinetic energy and speed and velocity. The higher the temperature, the faster molecules will move, the more energy they'll have, and the lower the temperature, the less energy and the slower they'll move. So we have decreased the temperature from 45 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. So that means the velocity, speed, kinetic energy should be shifted to the left because there's less of it. So we're gonna we're gonna shift the graph to the left, but simultaneously, if we shift the graph to the left, we have to make the curve higher. And the reason for that is because the area under the curve represents the number of molecules in total, and the number of molecules in total has to stay the same. So if we're making the the curve uh, uh, narrower, then we have to make it taller to maintain the same area. So that's how the distribution curve will look like at 15 degrees Celsius. At 70 degrees Celsius, that's an increase in temperature. So that means the molecules will have more energy, it'll be more, moving more quickly, so the graph will be shifted to the right. But if it's shifted to the right, then it will have to be flatter because uh, we have to, again, keep the area under the curve the same. Now let's take a look at the next example where we have to draw the curve for CH4O2 SO2 at 25 degrees Celsius. So this time it's the opposite. The temperature is the, the same and it's the identity of the gas that's changing. And more, more specifically, we care about the molar mass of the, uh, of, the, of the gases. So let's take a look at the molar mass. This is 16, this is about 32, and then this is about 64. We know that molar mass is the weight of the molecules inversely relate to how fast it's moving. Heavier molecules will be moving slower, and then lighter molecules will be moving, be moving faster. So we expect CH4 to be moving the fastest, then O2 to be moving the second fastest, and then lastly SO2 to be moving the slowest. So we'll start with the one that's in the middle again, SO2, and I'll just arbitrarily draw a curve. And then we'll take a look at the one that's faster. So we know that CH4 is going to be faster because it's lighter, then, um, whoops, sorry, I meant to draw, this is the curve for O2. And then we'll s draw the curve for CH4. Uh, we know that CH4 is going to be faster because it's lighter, so if it's faster, it's going to be shifted to the right, and it's also going to be uh, shorter because we have to, again, keep the area under the curve the same. And then lastly, SO2. Since it's the heaviest, it's going to be the slowest, so it'll be shifted to the left. And if it's shifted to the left, then it's going to be taller. And that's how you can draw and read and uh, interpret Maxwell distribution slash kinetic energy distribution curves. Just remember, if you are shifting the graph to the curve to the left, then you have to make it taller. And if you're shifting it to the right, it, you have to make it wider. Uh, There's a decrease in temperature and an increase in mass will shift it to the left and then an increase in temperature and a decrease in mass will shift it to the right because then the molecules will be moving faster. All right, hopefully that made, that made sense and now you can do these problems with no issues. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, 
then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going you're gonna to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.